Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shivangi Mishra. Here the top stories we are tracking for you. Two terrorists, one security personnel killed in an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Raging inflation squeezes the poor in cash-trapped Pakistan. And top Islamic State commanders killed by Taliban forces in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Indian security forces neutralized two terrorists in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday after a 12-hour battle in which a soldier was also killed. The encounter occurred after security forces launched a manhunt for the suspected killers of a Kashmiri Pandit security guard who was shot dead on Sunday in the region. Kashmir Zone Police said on Twitter that one of the slain terrorists was responsible for the killing of the security guard. Earlier on Monday, locals held a protest in Pulwama against the killing. Hindus and Sikhs are minorities in the Muslim-majority Kashmir Valley and are often the target of terrorists. India accuses Pakistan of aiding the terrorists to spread unrest in the region, a charge Islamabad denies. The recent minority community was involved in the और इसके साथ ही हम अब ये कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि इसमें जो फर्दर लीड्स हैं फर्दर प्रोग्रेस हैं हमको मिले और बाकी जो ग्रुप्स एक्टिव हैं उनको भी न्यूट्रलाइज कर दिया जाए इंडियाज फॉरेन मिनिस्टर एस जयशंकर ऑन ट्यूसडे सेड दैट इंडिया यूरोपियन यूनियन फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट विल बी अ गेम चेंजर फॉर द इंडिया ईयू रिलेशनशिप एंड न्यू डेली इज लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू म्यूचुअली बेनिफिशियल कंक्लूजन ऑफ द नेगोशिएशन प्रोसेस Speaking at the India-EU Business and Sustainability Conclave in New Delhi, Jay Shankar said EU is one of India's largest and important trade partners and the bilateral trade has crossed 150 billion US dollars. He highlighted India is one of the leading countries in climate change mitigation and said the green transition is score in achieving sustainable development goals. He said digital transformation is also happening in the country at a rapid pace. The conclave is focused on strengthening the India-Euro partnership amid changing geopolitical situations such as the Russia-Ukraine war. Let me emphasize that businesses have a primary role in driving sustainability and that is why we are all meeting here today. The enabler, however, is the larger partnership and the understanding between India and Europe. India and the European Union believe in a multipolar global order, share a commitment to promoting effective multilateralism, and are increasingly considerate to each other's geopolitical, economic, strategic, and security concerns. People across cash-strapped Pakistan are bearing the brunt of raging inflation while the government has hiked fuel and electricity tariffs and raised taxes in a bid to secure $1 billion loan from the IMF. A report. Squeezed by raging inflation, people across cash-trapped Pakistan are feeling the pinch of skyrocketing prices, while the government has hiked fuel and electricity tariffs, raised taxes and removed blanket subsidies as part of measures to secure a $1 billion US dollars loan from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. The country's weekly inflation rate rose to over 40% for the first time in five months. Official data showed last Friday on the back of prices of onions, chicken, eggs, rice and fuel. The situation has irked the common public at large. <laughs> The 
Pakistan desperately needs external financing with its foreign exchange reserves dipping to around 3 billion US dollars, barely enough for three weeks' worth of imports. Long-time ally China announced refinancing of $700 million, which was received by the State Bank of Pakistan on Friday, reports suggest. The United States has said that Pakistan has made meager progress in its pledge to dismantle all terrorist organizations without delay or discrimination. The U.S. Bureau of Counterterrorism in its recent country reports on terrorism states that Pakistan experienced significant terrorist activity in 2021, especially by groups including Tehrike Taliban Pakistan, the Balochistan Liberation Army and the ISIS-K. The terrorists used a range of tactics to attack varied targets, including suicide bombings and targeted assassinations. The report also raises concern that extremist doctrine was being taught by some madrasas or religious schools in Pakistan. While the government continued efforts to increase madrasa regulation, many of them failed to provide documentation of their sources of funding or comply with laws governing acceptance of foreign students. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid on Monday said the Taliban's security forces killed two key Islamic State commanders during a counter-terrorism raid in capital Kabul a few days ago. Jahid in a statement said that one of the slain terrorists was Kari Fateh, touted as the intelligence chief and a former minister of war of the Islamic State Khorasan province, ISKP. Mujahid said Kari Fateh was responsible for planning several attacks, including those against Russian, Pakistani and Chinese diplomatic missions in Kabul. The other commander known as Abu Usman al-Kashmiri was designated as a terrorist by the Indian government in January this year. The Taliban have periodically carried out operations against Islamic State since returning to power in Kabul in August 2021. Sri Lanka's cabinet spokesperson Bandula Gunavardhana on Tuesday informed that the government has approved the fast tracking of a preferential trade agreement with the South Asian neighbour, Bangladesh. Guna Vardhana said entering into a new trade deal is a part of government policy and it is imperative our exporters are supported to ensure that Sri Lanka can emerge from this financial crisis. Sri Lanka recently established an international trade office to restart stalled trade deal talks with China and Thailand as well as expand an existing agreement with India. The island nation of 22 million people has been struggling with its worst economic turmoil, which has forced it to default on loans and seek a 2.9 billion US dollars bailout from the IMF. Scores of devotees gathered at a temple in India's Mathura district on Monday to play Laddu Holi with sweets, which marks the beginning of celebrations of the Hindu festival of colours. Though Holi is a single-day festival elsewhere in India, it is almost a 10-day affair in Mathura. Take a look. Thousands of devotees gathered at a temple in Barsana in India's Mathura district on Monday to play Laddu Holi with sweets, which marks the beginning of celebrations of the Hindu festival of colours in the region. As part of the rituals, laddus are flung at devotees from the temple's terrace and they in turn compete with each other to catch the holy offering. It is believed that Hindu god of protection Lord Krishna visited Barsana to play holy. Smeared in different colours, people were seen dancing and singing to mark the festival, associated with the eternal love of Lord Krishna and his consort Radha. <laughs> Celebrated at the onset of spring, Holi also holds a mythological importance, that of the triumph of good over evil. Though Holi is a single day festival elsewhere in India, it is almost a 10 day affair in Mathura. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.